If you work with Microsoft SQL servers, then chances are you're familiar with a tool called SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio. It's been around for a long time. I've been using it since the mid 1990s and it allows us to use a graphical interface to connect to databases, to execute queries against those databases, to do some simple administration, to see some execution plans and such. It has a number of different features built into it, but you may not be familiar with the tool that we're going to look at in this video. It's by a company called DevArt. They actually were kind enough to give me a license so I could take a look at this. And it's called DB Forge Studio for SQL Server. They do make a number of other products. For example, they make a product that enhances SQL Server Management Studio. But for this video, we're going to look at a tool that they make, DB Forge, that completely replaces SQL Server Management Studio. Now, the first question you might ask is, why do I need to replace SQL Server Management Studio? Well, SQL Server Management Studio is a good tool, but it doesn't have all of the features. It doesn't have all of the uh, capabilities that we really need to work with data in today's environments. We know that data is super important to organizations and businesses, and we know that there's a lot involved to make sure that they, that data is consistent and clean, and we need to be able to work with that data from an administrative standpoint, and also from a development standpoint, and from an analytical standpoint. So we really need a tool that allows us to work with SQL uh, as a development platform, uh, allows us to design SQL databases. It allows us to do synchronization and comparison between data sets. It allows us to do administration, a little bit more robust administration than SQL Server Management Studio offers. It, we need a tool that allows us to do data orchestration, to do a data pump where we can move data around. We need a tool that allows us to do some of our basic analytics or prepare data for deeper analytics or to do analytics with that tool. And we need a tool that supports some of our DevOps activities so that we can incorporate our data into a DevOps environment. So we need more than just what we get with SQL Server Management Studio. We really need a more robust data development environment. And that's what DB Forge does. Let's go take a look at it. I think you're going to be very impressed because I know I was. Here I am on the devart.com website. You can see that they have a number of different products that they showcase right at the front, but I'm going to go right to products. You can see underneath each of these categories, they have a whole bunch of different tools for different products. In fact, they have a lot of free products and some of these are really good utilities that we can use. So what it does is it gives you a little bit of a understanding or a taste for some of the utilities that you can use for free. So you can see here that they've got a whole bunch of different types of, of tools in there. But what I'm going to do is underneath products, I'm going to specifically go to SQL Server Tools, which is for Microsoft SQL Server. You can see they support some other databases as well. And underneath the SQL Server Tools, I have two choices. I can either add an extension to SSMS where I can add these different tools into my SSM, SSMS environment, or I can use a completely uh, separate independent integrated development environment an IDE, which is DB Forge Studio. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've downloaded and installed my DB Forge Studio, and you'll notice that it has those elements that I talked about at the beginning of the video, a development environment, database tools, database design tools, sync tools, admin tools, orchestration, pump tools, analysis, and DevOps. We'll have a look at each of these categories, but I won't be able to go deep into each of these categories. There's a lot here. If you are interested in a specific area, I can make videos for that, but this is more of an overview video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a connection. So what I did is I created a little uh, database in Azure. So I created a SQL database up in Azure on the cloud, and I'm just going to go in here and we'll put the super secret password in here. If you want to learn how to create the database in the cloud, I have a video on that as well. But in this case here, I'm just going to put my authentication in there, test to make sure that this connection is valid. It found the Azure database. I'll connect to the Azure database. And now you can see I've got my different databases in here. If I drop in here, you can see I've got data in here, got some tables in here. So you can go in here, you know, typical things that you would expect to see. I can, um, I can work with it. There's a few extra things in here as well, such as source control. Well, let's talk about that. So you have things that you'd expect to see like your SQL editor where you can execute queries against the database. 
Uh, if you go back here, you can see there's things like a query builder. So you can use a visual designer to build queries. And again, I'm not going to read out everything here. I'm just going to point out some really cool things. One of the things I really like here is the ability to link your database to source control. So underneath here, what I can do is choose this database. So this is my connection. I can choose the database that I'm interested in, like the YouTube demo database. And then what I can do is create a source control repository. So I can add a new source control repository in here. By default, it goes to a working folder, which of course could be a network drive that we could use to do uh, uh, source control. But I can also connect up to things like a Git repository. So there's lots of different tools that I can connect up to. I'm not going to connect up into, well, I could. If I go in, I can just go in and I'll cre create a folder here. So I created a Z folder here. And if I go into here, you can see I've created a folder here called Data Dev YouTube. So if I go in here and I do uh, Data Dev YouTube, now, in this case here, I believe this database is already enrolled, but let's go ahead and we'll successfully connect it to the database. So you can see here, now what's going to happen is because I've already populated that, you'll see that it's, it's not going to be too happy with that. So we'll go test that again and successfully connected, but you can see the repository name. It's, um, I'll just put it YouTube 2 and we'll see if it'll take that. And then what it'll do is it'll create this repository for me. You can see I've got this repository here, YouTube 2. I'll create it as a dedicated source control repository. We'll create the link here, but this database was linked previously. I did delete a bunch. Yeah, it's already linked. But what it'll do is because it's already linked, any changes I make to the database, I can then load into that shared repository. So you have this nice source control unit there or function in there. And that's really handy if you're working with others. That's one of the things that we often do is we work with other people when we're developing databases. Underneath database design, there's some really cool tools in here. We can create database diagrams here. Obviously, we can create different objects. We can link it back to that same source control as well. Uh, we can go in and do schema comparisons. We can look for different objects and we can create documentation sets in here as well. So that also is a great way to build your, your data documentation through this tool as well. So I really like the design tools in there. Now, what we can do is also learn the principles of design with a book by Hernandez. So there's a book called Database Design for Mere Mortals, one of my favorite books, and we I'll link it down below. But you can... Um, you can check out that book for concepts. And then here we have an environment here right within this IDE where I can start building databases, designing good databases. Um, also, by the way, um, the um, DB Forge Studio, if you are interested in any of the, any of the products by, by DevArt, they gave me a link down below for a discount as well. So if we go to database sync here, I can do a schema comparison. I can take a snapshot of the schema. Here's a handy one where I can go in and I can copy a database. This is really useful when I'm doing things like data orchestration and I want to maybe copy a database so that I can build an analytical solution on top of a copy of the database rather than the source database. This is also another handy tool where I can do a data comparison. So it'll actually compare the data from two databases, and then I can even synchronize them up with each other and you can create a folder for different scripts uh, for the database. So I really like the database sync, very useful for orchestration and uh, we'll see something up in, in a few seconds that's even cooler. Administration has a lot of the administration things you would do with a database, manage your security, attach a database to your environment, copy a data by database. You can see that you can uh, prof do a profile, the server events that are occurring. So a profiler tool, we can look at indexes and fragmentation. This is amazing, especially if I have a lot of connections and I need to look at fragmentation a lot across a lot of different databases. It can tell me which data, in which indexes I need to rebuild, which ones I need to uh, refresh. So it'll, and it'll allow you to invoke that command right from that tool. Uh, we can generate scripts, we can look at invalid objects, the backup restore is here and some monitoring in here. So some really powerful administration tools all within this one interface. Probably, well, I shouldn't say probably, it's one of my favorite tabs, but I like them all. They're all just database tools. But this is a really neat feature where we can do the import export is built right in here. So I can actually start doing import and export, start playing around with import and export, um, and then even 
cooler, I can generate data. So if I'm doing some development and I need to generate some data for my data environment so that I can start playing around with it, you get the data generation in there. And then you have some of the tools appear here, like the generation of scripts and such. But this is awesome that I can generate data here as well. Analytics gives me some of that pre-analytical stuff that I may wish to do. You can do a lot of analytics right here. Now for myself, I would normally push analytics into some sort of consolidated architecture. So either in an enterprise environment, I would consolidate my data and then build analytical solutions on top of the consolidated data, or I might use a tool that also visualizes the data. But here I can go in and I can take a look at things like, you know, we have, I can design a report here. So I can do a nice little step-by-step -step to do a report in here and I can build pivot tables in here and I can look for specific data. So this is a really great way to start the process of cleansing and conforming data for an analytical solution. And then the DevOps tools, that's where you get things like Azure DevOps and PowerShell and such. So now you can start using some of the DevOps tools that are here. Um, and there's a number of them here that you can work with, right? So you have the Team City plugins, you have things like uh, Bamboo, right? You have, so, um, in terms of DevOps automation in there as well. But, you know, PowerShell and Azure DevOps, if you're in the Microsoft world, are things that you may be familiar with. So there you have a comprehensive data development environment, something that has a lot more power to it than just SSMS. Now, if you are interested, DevArt was kind enough to give me a discount code for anybody who wanted it. I, I'll put it down below in the description. They do have a 30-day free trial, so you can always try it out before you buy it, but there is a discount available for you. I'll also put a link down below to a database design book that I think everybody who works with databases should read. It's called Database Design for Mere Mortals by Hernandez. If you're one of my students, you absolutely know that I love the Hernandez book. I talk about it all the time in class. It's really, it's one of my top 10 computer books of all time. I highly recommend that everybody has that book. So if you are interested, go and check the description down below. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching. For some of my regular viewers that are more into the learning and teaching aspects or teams or something, I know this was a bit more of a technical video. I hope you watched it anyways, but I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.